His heart is my home. Good morning, good morning. Um, so many things to think about, and this was just so perfect. So fine. Sometimes us adults talk about things that I think go over my head. I don't know if it goes over your head or not. But um, Zeke, Zeke read the story today out of the Bible. And um, it talked about vines and branches and pruning and all that kind of stuff. First question is, do you know what a vine is? What's a vine? Um, I don't know. It grows on trees. <laughs> grows on trees. We have at, our, at my house a place that we call the jungle. It's been there the 50 years that I've lived there. It's between two properties. There's water. There's these crazy trees. And it's full of vines called the jungle. We've just always called it the jungle. Over the years, church ladies have made wreaths. We've made Christmas trees because we went to the jungle and we pulled vines. So guess what's in, guess what I did this morning? I went out and I pulled some vines. Here you go, hold that. I'm hoping they're not, Nick. I'm hoping they're great vines. They're wild grapevines. And these grow all in this jungle area. Look at them and see how they just, they, they grow. And they have these little curly cues and they just grow into the grass because I don't do anything with them. Except every couple years I go out and I use my little, these pruners because those, those are more pruners, but I use these because they're a little bit easier for me. And I cut them down, and I drag them out, and they're dry, and I take them to the fire pit, and I burn them. Well, that's what it talks about in the Bible. Well, how do you think we're, like this little branchy thing here, how can we be that? And this is Jesus? That does, I don't understand. Jesus told a lot of stories like that in the Bible. He tries to make us understand that if we... If this is him and it just grows crazy without being taken care of, then we nothing grows on it. I have never seen grapes off these vines. In all the years I've lived there, I've never seen a grape. But we got lots of vines. I got lots of branches. So probably if I went out and took my pruning shears and every year or so took care of them, then I might get some grapes, some fruit out of it. Well, us... Okay, if we're these little branch things, and Jesus is a vine, how do we prune ourselves? I don't think I want my fingers trimmed or anything. <laughs> Can you think of a way that we would prune ourselves? Any idea? Be a better person and work on things that you struggle with. I'm so glad you're my big child today. <laughs> you have good answers. That is a very good way. To prune ourselves, we can be a better person. Um, maybe by not arguing with your brother or sister. Maybe by not sassing your mom or dad. Um, maybe by being a better neighbor and driving somebody to church. Maybe by reading the Bible, uh, going to Sunday school. These are all ways that we can prune ourselves so that we can be closer to the vine. And then the, pr the fruit we would produce would be all those good things that come from us, things that help people, things that give to the needy. You know, there's so many ways maybe to help a kid in school that, you know, a new person that doesn't know anybody you could be their friend or stop somebody from being picked on or whatever. So that is a vine, the branches, and pruning for us. Okay? Let's say a quick prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, Help us stay close to the vine. Help us stay close to the vine. Prune, us Prune us as we need to. So we may produce your fruit. Amen.
Oh, good morning, everyone. I am Pastor Nick Berlanga. I am the United Methodist Pastor for Goodrich. Oh, and <laughs> I'm supposed to introduce the next song. <laughs> yes. Um, resurrection Power. Looking forward to hearing what this is all about. Oh, all right. Uh, stand if you are able and join us. Go ahead and have a seat. I want to say thank you for coming out on this beautiful morning. I hear we're supposed to get in the 70s today. So, yes, that's going to feel good. Yeah. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who's watching online. Um, I know that we can't see you here, but we know that your spirit is with us. Even if you're watching throughout the week, you're part of our community here. Um, I want to say thank you to Janine for leading worship and to Patty for our children's moment. Um, church is definitely a, a group effort. Well, today we're continuing our series on vine and branches. Our gospel verses for today were from John, traditionally considered the most poetic of the four gospels. And today we have this wonderful imagery of the grapevine, with all the branches coming off, tangled up together, some bigger, some smaller, but all working together to produce grapes. And unfortunately, some of the branches aren't doing their job, and they get trimmed off. 
Well, last week we talked about how a branch all by itself on a vine isn't enough to be part of a healthy plant. A full vine has many branches, and this is why community is such an important part of being truly fulfilled as Christians. This week, we're going to continue using the imagery of the grapevine to discuss what it means to be fruitful, what it means to be fruitful in the context of church. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have ever visited a vineyard. Um, I won't make you raise your hand. You know, we're all good Methodists here. We don't even know that they exist, so. <laughs> um, but there's a beauty to the way that vines are laid out. You know, they're, they're set up. The great vines are set up row after row after row, a neat line of plants. And all the plants are sculpted and, and held up on wire so that they're this beautiful shape. And you can see the trunk of the grapevine coming out of the ground. You know, it's typically much thicker than the, the rest of the branches that are coming off it. And then you see this tangled mess of green coming off the vine, kind of an intermixed um, web of branches that are following a path to the sun. Now, in a healthy plant, these branches are so numerous, so tangled and and covered with leaves, that it can be difficult to distinguish one branch from another. It's almost impossible to tell where one branch begins and the other ends. A healthy plant is just a, a web of these branches. And these vines are tended by the gardener, comes along and ties them up and spreads them out and does all the things to maximize their growth. Because if the plants are left to their own devices, they end up, like Patty talked about, laying on the ground and using all their energy to just go and spread out and be a mess. And as she mentioned, they don't really produce grapes. They put all their energy into that growth, that fight for survival. These vines start trying to push each other out. So all that kind of tying up and binding and pruning, all that work from the gardener, while it may seem painful, it's necessary. It actually makes the plant healthier. I am the vine and you are the branches, said Jesus. And as branches, hmm, what does that mean for us? Yeah. Well, in a healthy plant, the branches all work together to serve the entire plant. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Why did Jesus say that? Well, Jesus was giving an example of what it means to be part of community. As branches, we're like that grapevine, all mixed together. Now, in this day, we don't have an understanding of how radical it was for Jesus to say, I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus lived in a society where power and domination were the fundamental, fundamental elements of how society worked. It was all based on power. The emperor had the ultimate power. The emperor gave orders and everybody jumped. Rome ruled the rest of the world through threats of violence and oppression. And that system carried down. Even in individual households, the male head was considered infallible. Whatever father said, whatever husband said, could not be questioned. In fact, in fact, under... Yes, if you disobeyed the head of the family, you did it under threat of death. That's how much power and domination was embedded in the culture, in society, when Jesus lived. Yeah. 
Everybody wanted to stand out. Everybody wanted more power. Everybody wanted to be important. Even the disciples themselves fought with each other. Remember them arguing, who's going to sit at the right hand? Who's going to have the most power when Jesus comes into his kingdom? Because that's the only thing they understood. So the idea that we were all branches, the idea that we're indistinguishable from one another and our role as followers of Jesus was unheard of. Who wants to be a branch? The goal is to be the vine. My father is the gardener, Jesus said. Well, you can speak to any gardener in a vineyard, and you can ask, what's your favorite branch? Yeah. Do you really think that a gardener has a favorite branch? No. No. As a matter of fact, in the garden, in the vineyard, the gardener probably only thinks of branches in one of two ways. Those that produce fruit and those that don't. And those that don't are the branches that need to be trimmed away, which really only leaves one type of branch then, the good branches. And the good branches are all tangled up and they're all doing their work and the gardener has no favorite among them. What does this mean for us today? Well, I think sometimes the idea that we are all branches, that we are not a favorite, that we don't stand out, can be hard for us to understand. Yeah. We still live in a system where people really do want the gold star for being the best. Yeah. We live in a system where we are rewarded for standing out we are rewarded for being noticed. But Jesus is saying that's not what it's about. That we're all equals as branches on the vine. Now, I'm sure if you're like me, some of you are squirming in your seat thinking about this. What do you mean I don't get extra brownie points for helping out in the service today? What do you mean I don't get extra brownie points for all the work I did during the week. What do you mean I don't get extra brownie points? What do you mean I'm not God's favorite branch? Yeah. Don't worry. You are God's favorite branch. We're all God's favorite branch. Yeah. And you do get the gold star. But you don't get it in the way that you think. No, we don't get credit for comparing ourselves to others, which is what we are raised to do. How am I doing compared to everyone else? No, in a Jesus community, it's not a question of comparing yourself to others. It's not a question of who's more useful or more important or who's being the bigger witness and waving their arms. No, Jesus doesn't look at who is more talented or more musical or who gives more. Jesus says, just live in me. Follow me in my teachings. And if you're committed to me, that's all I need. And you will be fruitful. But if you don't, you'll fall away, dried up and rootless. Mm, what, is that? what does that mean? You know, there are times when I was sitting in the pews and I would think, am I getting an A in church? Like, like, what does that great ledger look like for me? Does God have a gold star next to my name when it comes to Sunday morning worship? You know, how fruitful am I, am I being? Maybe, maybe I need to work a little harder. Relax if that's what you're worried about. No, no. 
Jesus says, in order to produce fruit, we just have to abide in Jesus. To live within his teachings, to be in relationship with Jesus is the key. It's not about the results. Being fruitful happens on its own when we have a relationship with Jesus. Those who abide in me will bear much fruit. That's what we heard. He does not say those who work their guts out at being fruitful, at loving harder, at forcing others to be more peaceful will find me. No, no, it's the other way around. Connect with Jesus first. And then the love and the peace and the gentleness and all the other fruits of the Spirit will happen naturally. You know, there's a way we can tell when the equation is backwards. When someone claims to love Jesus and do the right things, but they haven't found that peace, that joy, that love for their fellow humans yet. It's not in their life. And they try and try to be fruitful, but it's exhausting to try to earn God's A. That's not what we're called to do. And without that real connection to Jesus, it's just too hard to live that way for long. And this is how the branch dries out and becomes bitter. Yes. And it's possible that through that, they actually become a detriment to the church because now they start snapping at others because they're not doing enough. They're not doing as much as me. And perhaps they demand the positions of power. They become like the disciples. I should have more. I should be in charge. Becoming increasingly embittered until they begin to twist that message of love and peace, kindness, into one of power and oppression. God loves me more than God loves you. Or taken even further. I guess in the simplest terms, what I'm saying is church is the place we, where we have to put our egos in check. And just let our love for Jesus run things. Church is the place where we should be humble enough to serve and important enough to matter. Yeah, where every person who visits is greeted as a long-lost friend returned from a perilous journey. Because for some people, that's exactly what walking through a church door is. A coming home. A place of safety. Church is a place where the hidden tech people are just as important as the visible folks up here. Church is a place where we should feel heartfelt gratitude for the folks who bake the cookies for fellowship time just as much as we have gratitude for the folks who are willing to come up and work with the children. Church is a place where how much money you give doesn't matter as much as how much love you share Church is where it's more important to sing with joy than it is to sing with precision. Yes. Where Sunday school is more about what we can share of ourselves than about showing what we know. Church is where we can be open and honest and where we can be vulnerable and feel safe from the demanding world that only knows oppression and domination. Part of what I love about being here is this is church. This past Friday, we had an excellent example of church. Um, for those who are not able to attend, um, the dinner was a breathtaking experience. And yes, the food was amazing, and the lights and the music made it feel like an outdoor cafe in Paris. 
the table settings, the wonderful volunteers and servers, all of that was part of it. But what really stood out for me was the joy that was there. Yeah, I was out here in the hall, and I got to talk to people, and everybody had a huge smile on their face. And I could hear in the fellowship area the laughter of the people at the tables, the greetings of old friends and the making of new ones. Yes. In fact, people were having so much fun, I, I couldn't get a table. But <laughs> I'm only the pastor, so that's okay. Yes. That, that joy, that joy is what we want with everything we do. Yes. Yeah. We want that joy every Sunday morning. We just need to make sure that we remember that's, that's what church is really about. Yeah. And sometimes we need to tweak a few things, and some of that's on me. Some of that's on you. So I have a question for you. This week, I want you to ask yourself, how is your connection to the vine growing? Are you letting Jesus live in you as you live into Jesus' teachings? Hmm? Are you feeling it? Or maybe it's time for a regrafting, or just an opportunity for you to catch your breath, do some praying, some meditation, read some scripture. Maybe you need to prune a few things off, perhaps there are things you need to let go of. Perhaps, perhaps God calls you, and you're ready to jump in and take apart of being church. We have plenty of spaces for you, no matter what your gifts or your talents are. There's a place for you to make this an even better church. I'll tell you what. Come see me. We'll have a cup of coffee. I can tell you where we have a place for you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we could talk about that or anything else that you would like to discuss. So let us pray. Nourishing God, you are the source of all of our blessings. It's through you that we are able to grow, to love, and to live abundantly. We ask your blessing on us and our church. Help us to live and grow in Jesus so that we may be fruitful in our mission to transform the world. Give us joy to share with others, love to give freely to those who need it. This we pray in the name of the one who is the vine, Jesus Christ. Amen. I will let you take over, Jean. I'm going to invite Blaine back up. I'm going to also invite our ushers forward to collect our offering. Do you need help on the sides, Matt? Okay. Okay, so when it comes to you at the end, pass it back and around. If you are online, we ask that you go to goodertumb.org and click on Get Now. And if you are at home, Road in Good four eight four three eight. Hold me, Flame. I lose the fight, try my best, but just don't get it right. Where I talk, talk, 
that I don't walk and miss the moments right before my eyes. Somebody with a hurt that I could have had, somebody with a hand that I could have had, when I just can't see past myself, Lord, help me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith, a little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus less like me. Yeah, there's no denying I have changed. I've been saved from who I used to be. But even at my best, I must confess I still need help to see the Somebody with the hurt that I could have had, somebody with the hand that I could have had, when I just can't see past myself, Lord, help me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith, a little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus. A little less like me. Let us pray. Loving creator, you are the source of all our blessings. You shine your light on us and water us with your love. We grow stronger when we remember that we are not the only branch on the vine. Today, we give back some of our blessings out of love. We pray that these gifts will help others feel your grace in their lives. Amen. Amen. I have some announcements, actually some joys and concerns. So, lots of them. I'm going to do the concerns first. Um, I think this is a, a big one that is on a lot of people's minds. Prayers for the Middle East. Um, there's a, a lot that is happening there. Prayers for Christopher the Stampone and his Aunt Anne, who is in her last stages of her journey in this life. We're going to pray for Christopher and his Aunt Anne. Now for some joys. A joy, um, the blood drive collected 43 units. So yes, very successful. Yes, that there were people in and out all that day. 
Um, Joy's, Terry's great granddaughter successfully had a trach removed at U of M after 13 years. Wow, that is a joy. Uh, joys for um, the Goodrich High School robotic team. Um, they are traveling to the World Championships in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! That's impressive. Um, joy, um, we prayed for Jean Kelly, and there's thanks for her prayers. Um, after after almost dying, she's starting to get well enough um, to get around at home. So that's a big change. And then thank you for the wonderful Friday night dinner. Joys around the dinner and being with friends. And thanks for all the hard work involved. And I think this is my favorite for today. A joy around new faucets in the women's restrooms. <laughs> yes, that is church. That is church right there. Yes, that is a joy. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose love is beyond understanding, whose mercy is beyond comprehension, we lift up our hearts to you in prayer. We live in a world that seems full of pain and strife, yet your grace has rescued us and given us peace. You have freed us to experience divine love in our own lives. We pray for those we know who are in pain, physically, emotionally, mentally. We know you are the caring gardener who will ease their burdens. We pray for peace in the world, especially for the end of the wars in Israel and the Ukraine. We ask that peace and comfort be granted to those in our country who do not see those around them as equal children of God, but as somehow less than them. Grant to us a determined faith and a deep love that we may be a reflection of your divine grace. Hear our prayer, O Lord, as we offer our joys and concerns this morning in the name of the one who is love, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we will use the words that Jesus gave to his followers to finish this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. this morning. The M15 garage sale, which happens the first Saturday of May, we will be hosting spots here at the park in the parking lot and the United Methodist men have opened it up for anybody within the church to donate items to be sold and any saying any money that is collected will then go to the building fund principal. And speaking of the building the finances, they, we are work, they are working hard, I should say, and they wanted to give us an update on the mortgage. We are at $91,732.31. I will be honest, I called John this past week and said something about a million, and he's like, it better be less than 100000 so. <laughs> So, I just read the number wrong in my text. Um, the last thing is I'd like to invite you all to Sunday school. Today, we are learning.
learning about, and it just left me, Elijah. Elijah, thank you. You do not have to read the book to come to class to be involved in the conversation. Um, I have plenty of questions from reading the book for you. So <laughs> please join us. And then there will also be Sunday school for the little kids. I think that's all I have. Okay. Okay, you need to be in a microphone. You need to be in a microphone. I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Thank you, David. David's got that one for you if you don't want to. Oh, I don't want that. So who doesn't like sauerkraut now? Um, Well, thank you for to set up labor, to the chef and her kitchen staff, to dishwashers, to wait staff, to pie makers, to maitre d's, and to the man who stayed in his truck outside the um, church waiting for the plumber and missing his dinner, it takes a village. Thank you all very much. Amen. 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 We have one more song for you, and before we sing it, I just want to reference Pastor Nick's words. We sing and play with a whole lot of joy, not always a lot of precision, but always a lot of joy. So <laughs> um, stand and join if you um, are able to stand, and we'll sing our um, last song. I lose the fight Try my best but just don't get it right Where I talk and talk that I don't walk And miss the moments right before my eyes Somebody with the hurt that I could have helped Somebody with the hand that I could have helped when I just can't see past my head, so Lord, help me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love, and faith, a little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Yeah, there's no denying I have changed. I've been saved from who I used to be. But even at my best, I must confess, I still need help to see the way you see. Somebody with the hurt that I could have helped. Somebody with the hand that I could have helped. When I just can't see past myself, Lord, help me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love, and faith, a little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Love and faith, a little more like patience, a 
little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, oh, a little less like me, a little more of living everything I preach, a little more of Jesus, a little less like me. Yes, let's give them a big hand. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Ah. So, ooh, I've got one extra minute. Guess what we're going to do? <laughs> Actually, if you've got one of these, Feel free to use it, but I would like for you to reach out to somebody. It could be somebody next to you or somebody who's on your mind and tell them God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. But go ahead. Give me a minute. Okay. Lucas. Lucas. God Let me leave you with a blessing. Go now and love one another. Remain in Jesus Christ and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all Fear and fill you <coughs> with God's love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. A little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith, a little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus. Oh, a like me, a little more of living, everything I preach, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me.